Every Division III softball program across the country had this date in June circled on the calendar as the ultimate goal, playing for a national championship. We're down to two. The Seagulls of Salisbury, the number one seed, able to survive after a day one loss, while the Thunder of Trine able to follow that exact same recipe, each of them surviving four elimination games, each of them with a new lease on life. It is a true best of three game series today and tomorrow between those Seagulls and the opposing Thunder. Lincoln Rose, Sydney Gearbrack, along with our NCAA.com crew back with you. Thanks for tuning back in. Marshall, Texas, the site this year. As and the offense for these two teams have been brilliant. Salisbury even sprinkled in a little bit of drama. They were down to their final out two days ago against Barry, who had yet to lose. They handed them one loss, and in that second game in the seventh inning, able to tie it up four runs, all with two outs. They came back in the eighth, and they walked it off. And what a great way to prove to yourselves that you're playing the best softball right now. Salisbury Seagulls able to come through with some magic last inning inspiration to tie things up and then ultimately push one more across in extras. That's exactly the type of performance that you want to have late in the game when you've been doing everything that you can to win. It just doesn't seem to be going your way, but you trust yourself, you trust your teammates, and Lincoln, that's going to be what both of these teams need to do today. Uh, this is the best they're going to be uh, throughout the season. Trust yourself, trust your teammates, play smart, and have fun. Meanwhile, Trine thought that they were going to have a chance to lock things up on that same evening, but weather pushed them and Co. to yesterday where the Thunder convincingly able to claim their ticket into this series for a second straight year, Trine. One of the last two teams last year, they were swept in this championship series by Christopher Newport. This year they face the number one seed, Salisbury, who hails from the same coast-to-coast -coast conference that last year's national championship captains came from. Lindsey Windsor had three of those Victories and starts in that elimination bracket. She is back here in game one facing Cassie Woods for Tron. And two players on your screen right now are going to be players to watch. Cassie Woods has been outstanding for run production, for getting on base, playing defense. A great transfer from Eastern that has just supplemented the offense for Trine. She is a true meaning of a leadoff hitter, sees a lot of pitches, gets on base, is an absolute pain in the neck for opposing defenses. Yeah, and Lindsey Windsor among the All-Americans in this matchup. First team All-American, three-time pitcher of the year in the Coast to Coast Conference, and she will sit down Woods on three pitches. First strikeout on the day for Windsor, as Woods, not an easy out, will head back to the dugout. Gives way to Emma Lee, one of the, quote, next woman up stories that has made this championship run possible as one of the fixtures in the outfield and in their lineup, Ellie Trine, has had some bumps and bruises along the way. And Emma Lee has plugged right into center field and into the lineup, even showed some home run pop earlier this week in an elimination game for the Thunder. And what incredible contributors we've seen on the Trine offense and defense in the freshman class. Lee, Joe Trine, Debbie Hill. Over to the left side, snagged by Lednam from the knees, over to first, in time. And that's a beautiful play there by Lednam. Is not gonna let that ball roll slowly over to Paoli or in the five, six hole. Throws from the knees, a close play, but a great play. No review from Trine. It's two up, two down. Madison Lednam flashing the leather and the arm. That gives way to Joe Trine, younger sister of Ellie. The freshman finally getting to play on the same stage. She saw her sister and her current teammates play on last year in Salem. Joe, like Ellie, out of Kokomo, Indiana, the freshman hitting 369 with six home runs coming into this week. Third team all region honors. And she faces Lindsey Windsor. This is playable. And first baseman Myers underneath it. An ideal start for Lindsey Windsor. 
and the Seagulls in the top of the first. When we come back, it'll be Alexis Michon getting her first start of the week with her new team. A couple of All-Americans waiting for her in the batter's box for the number one seed, Seagulls. Last year, an Eastern Warrior. This year, a member of the Trine Thunder back for her second straight NCAA Championship week for the first time playing in the NCAA Championship Series here in Division Three. Alexis Michon, twice this week in elimination games, has come on in relief and found the victory for the Thunder as the Bats, thanks to her buying them some time, would battle back. She gets the start today facing the All-American Abby Mace leading off for Salisbury. It'll be Mace, Windsor, and Jacoby. Jacoby, a big part of that comeback in the seventh inning. Against Barry two nights ago. Paoli, Lednam, and Stockman, the middle third of the order. Flowers, Myers, and Lemon, the seven, eight, and nine hitters. It's Ainsley Phillips again behind the plate, catching yet another talented pitcher for trying. Both these teams, great depth. A lot of good options to put in the circle. Elliott and Prather in the infield on the left side. Byer and Tranter on the right side. Woods, Lee, and Trine. Joe Trine in right from left to right. A 2-1 count now to Mace. Abby again, first team All-American three times. First team All-Conference in the Coast to Coast Conference. That unique conference that really is more focused on the conference tournament as opposed to any standard Conference schedule as May sends this one skyward. Byer from second ranging into right field makes the catch. And the conditions in Marshall have given many teams problems today. No wind. Some of that heat is back, but the humidity is not here as it has been in previous days of this tournament. So knowing that ball can carry a little less air for the laces to grip onto. Lindsay Windsor crushed her ninth home run of the year in that semifinal matchup against Barry over the center field wall. Comes up here with nobody on and one out facing Michonne. Salisbury last year finished fifth. We mentioned Trine, your runner up last year, dropping both games to Christopher Newport. Windsor will try to bunt for the base hit. Michon's throw in time. Two away. Well done by Alexis Michon as Bayer gets over to cover. And that is a great idea there from Lindsay Windsor. Considering they are going to be playing her back most likely because she is one of those players that can send one out of the park quick. She's collected an extra base hit in four out of the five games at the national championship. So... Definitely a kid known for hitting for extra bases. That brings up the worst poker face we've seen all week, Carrie Jacoby. <laughs> Constant enthusiasm from the Seagull with the 23 on her back. First team all-conference sophomore. First team all-region as well this year. Hitting 451 coming into this week. Trying bats went in order. In the top half of the first, Alexis Michon trying to match that here against the talented top third of this lineup for Salisbury. Salisbury had just three losses all season. Showed up, played in the very first game of this championship against eight seed Moravian, promptly fell four to one in that contest. They have not lost since. Same story for trying that night on day one when they were almost run ruled by Rowan. 
2-1 launch down towards Lee in center to the warning track makes the catch with both hands. And it is three up, three down for the top third of both orders against some talented pitching on display in this championship series. After one, we are scoreless in Marshall, Texas. On to the top of the second, and yet another All-American to introduce you to. First team All-American, Debbie Hill, who's been fantastic in the circle this week. Right now, they just lean on her for her bat, the DP batting cleanup for Tron. Debbie with two home runs, one of which left a mark on the scoreboard. The other one, thankfully for the scoreboard's sake, went <laughs> over the scoreboard yesterday. Both out there in right center field. It's Hill, Prather, and Byer to the minimum three that Windsor would have to face. And while Debbie Hill's two-run shot definitely took the wind out of her opponent's sails yesterday, it was also coupled with 10 strikeouts, knowing that she'll probably be ready at a moment's notice in case her teammate gets in trouble on the mound. After trying was almost run ruled on day one, they came back, played extra innings with Linfield, the two seed, and walked that one off. A bang bang play at the plate in the eighth inning. Kept trying season alive. So trying eliminated Linfield, the two seed, Moravian, the eight seed, and single handedly eliminated the seven seed, Co. Handing them two losses. Hill looking to go opposite field, not going to carry. Flowers able to squeeze it in for out number one. Sam Flowers in left field, Abby Mason center, Jillian Dawson, your right fielder, the flex. Infield from left to right, Lednam, Paoli, Lemon, and Myers. Emily Stockman continues to catch all of these talented pitchers for Salisbury. As we have a tandem of sisters in both these dugouts, <laughs> the Stockmans and the Trines. Here's Amanda Prather who if she was 0 for 20 this week, still might be in the running for all tournament team with the way she's played at shortstop. And Prather, one of three of the Trine Offense who have played and started every single game this season, all 49. A great constant three times now, first team all conference. And last year she was all championship tournament team. 3 0 count to Prather with one out, nobody on. Emma Beyer on deck for the Thunder. Trine had a 17 game winning streak coming into Marshall before losing on day one to Rowan in that night cap. It's their third championship in five years. It's their second straight year to play in the championship series. They were the sixth seed last year. Actually went up against Alexis Michon and Eastern in that first game that spanned two days. Opposite field, down the line, that's a foul ball. They then met Salisbury, try and handed Salisbury a loss. Nine to one in the winner's bracket. That was a run roll victory last year in Salem. Try and then would knock off another familiar squad in Barry, five nothing. As half of this year's eight teams were also in Salem last year. Look forward to being in Salem next year for the 50th anniversary of Division Three. It's got a foul tip on that ball and then Came back and bitter. Nobody on with one away for Prather. This has been a fantastic week here in East Texas. The folks at ETBU and the NCAA committee and all the volunteers put on a great event for these student athletes. 
and all the families. Debbie Hill, flight out to left. Still looking for that second out. Payoff pitch from Windsor. Shot back to center. Mace towards the warning track. Got a read on it in time, two away. And had three up, three down innings in inning one, but looks like these players are figuring out what pitch to hit early here. Even when you square it up and it goes right into the glove of a defender, that's some momentum for you to take into your next at bat, having an idea of what to choose. Sophomore Emma Beyer out of Rochester, Michigan. That is just foul. Lindsay Windsor's retired the first five she's faced. Now seeing the bottom half of this try and lineup for the first time. One and one. Neither of these teams has ever won a national title. Only CNU and Linfield had previously won titles among the eight teams that arrived this week. Each of them two and out. Lednam, a little more time this time around. That is a six up, six down so far for Lindsey Windsor. And this defense, Salisbury has the benefit of being the home team today in game one. They'll bring their middle third of the order up next. Umbrellas have been dual purpose this week. First couple of days simply to provide some shade here in the East Texas sun. Last few days, some rain clouds made their way through as well. This is the first time in three games the Thunder matchup uh, has not been preceded by Thunder and Lightning. Home half of the second, Natalie Paoli, Madison Lednam, and Emily Stockman do up to face Alexis Michon for the first time. Paoli, the senior out of Delaware. Second team All-Region, a two-time conference scholar-athlete. Last year, third team All-American. She is part of a senior class that was the last class recruited by the late Hall of Famer Margie Knight, who again was lost shortly after their championship appearance last year in Salem in July. Big loss for the softball community, especially in Division Three, where her legacy includes building this program that now has made 11 championship appearances. As this one foul off the bat of Paoli. Of course, one of her many, many players was Lacey Lister, the four-time All-American, now Lacey Lord, the head coach of Salisbury for the past few years after taking the reins from Coach Knight. One ball, two strike count here to Paoli after that last foul ball. A bloop over the right side, Byer has it. One away. That's one of those swings that you wish that you could get back, Lincoln. It's going to be important for Salisbury to not give any sort of free pass to Trine. Trine Thunder is the team that is going to take it and run with it. We've seen them punish teams for giving them an inch. Lacey Lord's first season as head coach ended right here at ETBU in the regionals. Imagine much more thrilled that their season this year will end here. Playing for a national title. Looking for that first ever win on the final day. That's a three game series here. Both these teams are two wins away from their first national championship. Lednam, who's already had a fantastic defensive play at third. The whip of the bat around on that one well fell. Thank you. 
Letting him out of East New Market, Maryland, the senior. Second team all region. Made every start at the hot corner since her freshman year. Nobody on, one out. The 0-2 from Ashan. And we're going to see Michonne really work that inside corner on a right-handed hitter. Screw ball right above the hands. And then she'll work any part of the upper third of the strike zone with that rise ball. See if she can get a swing and miss. Letting them look into the gap. Coming in from center to make the catch, Emily. Oh, what a luxury it's been to have Emily plug in and center. And she may never relinquish that role, the freshman. And another great catch here from Emma Lee, laying out, knows that she has the opportunity here to make a game-changing play. And that's some great momentum there for the Trine defense. Two-thirds of that outfield freshman. <laughs> Be great fixtures for Donnie Denkelson for years to come. Here's Emily Stockman. Made her first championship appearance last year in Salem as a freshman. Now the sophomore backstop for Salisbury. We often see her sister Ellen come in at first. The 1-0 from Michonne. And Stockman into foul territory. We'll see another pitch, 1-1. One and one. If Emily Stockman can extend this inning and give Salisbury the first base run of the day, Sam Flowers on deck. But today's starting pitcher is a couple of good ones that we've seen in years past, Lindsey Windsor and Alexis Michon. Not chasing the 1-1. Salisbury's seven all-region selections tied Tufts in their region this year. Such a talented lineup from top to bottom. A program that's won 21 conference titles. And more often than not is in the championship conversation on the national stage. Three one to Stockman. They should get Tron out of the inning. Woods underneath it calls off the freshman center fielder. Says you already had your play. And yeah, she'll bring it in. Each lineup goes six up, six down. It's on to the bottom third of the order. It's on to the top third of the ball game when Trine comes back to the plate. It's a pristine scoreboard at the moment. Zeros all the way across both lines onto the top of the third. Let's see if Ashley Tranter can dirty it up a bit. Lindsey Windsor seeing the bottom third of the order for the first time for the Thunder. Tranter, Michonne, and Phillips. We have not seen the bat of Alexis Michonne yet this week. Just a couple of fantastic relief performances in the circle. She gets her first start today opposite of Lindsay Windsor, who, of course, her bat always in the lineup for Salisbury. Lemon. Over to Myers with ease. One away. Michonne this year, a 286 hitter with a couple of RBI. Third team all region after last year being the national pitcher of the year in Division Three. 
Started her career at Plymouth State. Last year, a sophomore at Eastern Connecticut State. This year's second team all-conference in her new home of the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association. And the challenge here with not getting as many at-bats is you have to be taking at-bats before you actually stand up there. And Michonne's had enough on her plate. Of course, she's involved in every pitch when she's out there defensively. Don't do this now, but between innings, get out a map of Michigan and see if you know where Angola, Indiana is. And now two on count to Michonne. See if she can give herself a little bit of offensive help. Slow roller left side, Paoli able to get it across. Something about defenses, uh, having something to say about championships. <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah, it's a good at bat there from Michonne. She fouls off an inside pitch over to the right side, then able to make an adjustment there within the at bat. Impressive to see considering how she is not getting the same number of at bats and some of her counterparts. They're even a pinch hitter, rather. He's going to be more of an offensive specialist. Ainsley Phillips, who just like Emily Stockman, fantastic behind the plate, catching a variety of pitchers, each with their own unique style. Again, this is not a true double elimination tournament. If it was, this would be it. But regardless of how you got to this series, a fresh slate, we will crown the champion tomorrow, whether it takes one or two games. Just one game today. Couple of ground ball outs so far this inning from the bottom third of the order. Windsor facing Phillips for the first time. Then Cassie Woods in the on-deck circle. And Woods is going to have a chance to come up. It's a base hit for Ainsley Phillips. The nine-hole hitter comes through. One on with two outs. And nothing more annoying to a pitcher than a hitter that is able to bloop one over the head of one of my defenders. But a hit's a hit. And a good adjustment there from Lindsay Phillips. Only one strikeout through the first time through the lineup for Lindsay Windsor. It was this talented bat of Cassie Woods. Woods got her degree from Keene State, spent the past two years at Eastern, including last year with Michonne. Woods arrived at Trine, and her first season hit 414 coming into this week. Second team all region after being an all American center fielder last year when she hit 486 on the season. Right side, still a chance to get out of the inning, and it's another zero on the board. Trine has brought 10 to the plate, none of whom have scored. It'll be Salisbury, your home team here in game one, with a chance again to strike first in the bottom of the third. Trine found the first base runner, first base hit of the ball game, but that also equated to a runner left on here at the home of the ETBU Tigers. Lincoln Rose along with former Houston Cougars, Sidney Gearbrack. We move on to the bottom of the third, a scoreless affair. And Salisbury's lineup still coming up for the first time against Alexis Michon, who, like Windsor, enters this inning perfect. Flowers, Myers, and Lemon, the minimum three do up. For the Seagulls, now 48 and four on the year. 50 wins sounds pretty good to them. <laughs> that would lead to their first ever national championship. Their baseball team just exited the 
Division Three Baseball Championship this week. Such a great athletics department all together. Of course, men's lacrosse won its 13th national title. That's tied for the most in Division Three. A national championship this week in softball would be a good way to send off Dr. Jerry DeBartolo, retiring as their director of athletics it's after 44 years at Salisbury, past eight as the top C goal. And Lincoln, I love Flowers, Myers, and Lemon, these, these seven, eight, nine who have been so important for run production for Salisbury all season long. You don't have the 28 or excuse me, 55 RBIs from Lindsey Windsor and the 40 RBIs from Abby Mace if this bottom part of the lineup isn't producing and getting on base however they know how. Well, here's a tough spot. In fact, they are going to bat for Myers now that they have a base runner to lead things off. A payoff, or pardon me, a, a free pass to the leadoff batter in the third. Flowers is on, so let's see if they can manufacture what could be a difference maker here. It's going to be Jillian Dawson, the flex, your right fielder, who's going to bat for the DP Myers. Have to imagine she'll be squaring up. The infield is in for trying all the way around. So unlikely to see a chance for a double play ball. And no such bunt being between the infielders and the outfielders here. If you can just bloop one. Every Runner on first, Flowers. There's the bunt. Unsuccessful on the first try. Assignment for this first championship game. John Cambridge behind the plate. Linda Long. And the threat of a bunt now, presumably taken away with two strikes. Dawson fights it off. We'll turn back around, have game two tomorrow at the same time. Game three. the start out there and right. Passes as it is to be able to execute the small ball. We know that most teams have done a great job of being able to get down that sack bunt. Seen some great textbook softball here to move the runner. Dawson has an opportunity to recover here, even if she just puts it in play. Dawson at the plate, the pinch hitter. Sam Flowers after the leadoff walk, still on first. Michonne getting her first start of the week after picking up two wins in relief. And the count has gone full after the first three pitches. Either strikes or fouls. This is a great recovery by Dawson, who was put in for her speed. Third. 
And that was the next best case scenario, Lincoln, for Salisbury. A great at bat there. Two speedy Seagulls on the base pads. Now first runner in scoring position for this game. Pitching coach Dennis Smith will make his way out to talk to Alexis Michon. Probably reminding her that Maddie Lemon hit the first home run this week in that elimination game against Christopher Newport. We've seen a couple of home run hitters who have saved their power for the end of the season, including Lemon for Salisbury and Emma Lee for Trine. Lemon at the plate. Could she square around? With runners on second and first, nobody out. And a couple of All-Americans waiting in the wings behind her. Lemon, first-team All-Conference, the senior. Showed bunt. As, again, both corner infielders charging in, Elliott and Tranter. That'll put Prather in charge of covering third for any kind of throw. Mm -hmm. And Byer needing to cover first. Standard depth for the outfield, if not even maybe a step back. And you see a generous jump from Flowers, in part because nobody's there to hold her on unless the center fielder were to come in from behind and sneak up on her. And you see Emma Lee slightly shaded over. Albuquerque. <laughs> Correct. But that's always a good indicator for the hitter's tendencies. It also may be an indicator of where the pitcher is planning to throw. You'll see a lot of players are on some teams. You'll see that every player is going to be taking a look at where that pitch is thrown and making slight adjustments. Step forward, step to the left, to the right. That is not uncommon. We're not seeing that with trying here. First two base runners of the ball game for Salisbury. Back-to-back -back walks here in the third. Number nine hole hitter trying to come through. 2-0 to Lemon. And you wonder if she would square around on a 3-0 pitch. Her problem is, in order to look at her head coach for the signal, uh, she also catches her teammates in the dugout in her peripheral vision. <laughs> The 3-0 from Ashawn with two on and nobody out. And she will keep Lemon there, who is not squaring around. But taking. And sometimes as a pitcher, your best bet is just let them get the bunt down. Throw a good pitch, put enough juice on it. Lemon gets that bunt down. Only play is at first. Trine executes, but so does Maddie Lemon. Sacrifice bunt moves Flowers to third, Dawson to second. Two in scoring position for two All-American bats. And Maddie Lemon, a 320 hitter on the season. We know that she could produce offensively here, but does the selfish thing for her team and gets the sacrifice bunt down. That puts two runners in scoring position for Abby Mace in the top of the lineup with one out here. This is an opportunity for the Salisbury Seagulls to be the first to strike. So priority will be a play at the plate if possible as there's no force around the bases. With first base unoccupied, Abby Mace was the team's sole leader in home runs before Lindsey Meyer tied her this week with a ninth. Uh, Mace with a lot of pop. Also capable of squaring up for a squeeze. Popped up back in the first inning, 0 for 1 today. Both teams finding base runners here in the third, trying stranded one. Salisbury, perhaps a wild pitch or pass ball away from taking a lead. Two and one. And y'all at home can't see it, but Flowers and Lemon both taking glances back at the outfielders. And those outfielders continue to take mm -hmm. a couple more steps back. Yep. Keep everything in front of them. Mm -hmm. 
One out, two on for the Seagulls, both in scoring position. That ball found the bat a moment ago, two and two. Top of the order for Salisbury. Bottom third is come. He swoops around on that one. We'll see the 2-2 count once again. And that's a good pitch to hit. That is definitely in Abby Mace's wheelhouse. Might be looking for something outside to hit behind both runners, but either way, with the runner on third, anything you put in play is going to be behind her. And again, it's important for Mace here to not overswing. No need to be a hero. Do enough to just put your team on the board. Mace will shoot this one back to the warning track. Should score one. Sam Flowers, who led off this inning with a walk, will come home and the right decision by the freshman Lee to make sure that Dawson did not also advance. But Salisbury has a lead here in game one of the championship series. And selfless, productive outs from Maddie Lemon and Abby Mace figuring out a way to move their runners that extra 60 feet. And that's a beautiful piece of situational hitting for Maddie Lemon, knows that she gives her team and her base runners the insurance to tag up and take home. Here's Lindsay Windsor. Michonne and Try not in the clear just yet. Both outs for Salisbury sacrifices this inning after a couple of walks, one of whom has come home in flowers. We're seeing Ainsley Phillips working back there Trying to get that frame for Alexis Michon a little late. One and one. And what's tricky as a catcher is you're sort of framing as you're catching it in some ways. As often as possible, trying to catch it in the middle of your body. So Dawson still the runner on second with two outs here. And Windsor... Out to Lee, the damage will be minimal, but here in the penultimate day of the Division Three softball season, it's Salisbury with a left. Back here on the campus of East Texas Baptist University, home of the Tigers and home this week of the Division III Softball Championship. Eight fantastic teams, including the bottom four seeds all winning on day one. That trend did not continue as these two obviously would have been among your favorites coming into the week. Number one seed Salisbury, number three seed Trine. They had the pitching and the hitting to battle back each winning four elimination games to make their way to this championship series, a true best of three game series. Lindsay Windsor has a lead to work with and she faces Lee Trine and Hill, the freshman triumphant for Trine. Lee grounding out to the left side back in the first when Madison Lednam made that fantastic stab with her glove and throw from her knees. This one over Lednam, a base hit for Lee. She's looking for extra bases as Flowers has trouble at the wall, picking that one. It's a leadoff double for Emma Lee, tying run in scoring position for the Thunder. Emma Lee turning hard on this inside pitch from Windsor. And a beautiful execution here of getting on base and a great response to the one run that was pushed across by the Salisbury offense. That sophomore slump can wait until next year. <laughs> Here's Joe Tron. Fouled out to end that first inning. Second hit now for the Thunder. They left one on last inning. Mm. That's a good choice there by Ellie Trine. 
My mistake. That's a great choice there by Joe Trine. I'm sure Ellie made a good choice. <laughs> Both Trine sisters made a great choice joining the Thunder. Joe Trine choosing it that first pitch. Takes a good hack. Outside pitch. Up the middle. Chance to tie this ball game. Donnie Dankelson will send the runner home. Mace fires it over Stockman. That will allow Trine to head to second. It's an RBI base hit for Joe Trine to score her classmate Lee. And it's a brand new ball game here in the top of the fourth. And again, a great response here from Trine. Emma Lee knows she's going from the moment that ball is hit. Catches coach as she's rounding third. And then Joe Trine makes a great decision. Doesn't necessarily go to second immediately. Waits until that throw to clear the middle of the infield. And then takes her base. Well, now it's just the bat of Debbie Hill. <laughs> Merely the bat of Debbie Hill. <laughs> she flied out to left back in the second. It was a round trip ticket. She's back at the plate now. A double from Lee, a single from Trine. The third of the three freshmen, the first team All-American, Debbie Hill. Could easily make this a two-run lead for the Thunder. They'll throw down behind Trine, who's back. And Lindsay Windsor gets the start for Salisbury. Three wins this week, all in elimination games, as they were saving her for day two. They were presuming that would be in the winner's bracket, likely against their conference rivals, Christopher Newport. Well, they met the captains the next day, but it was the season on the line, and it was Salisbury ending the reign of the captains. Each of the last three years, our national champion has come from the same state that hosted each of the past five championships. The champion has either been from Virginia or Texas. Mm -hmm. We knew with no Texas teams able to make it all the way here, something would change. Teams from Indiana and Maryland colliding, and it's Debbie Hill with a walk. Two on, nobody out. And keys for both teams was going to be getting to as many pitchers in the bullpen of their opponent as possible. Putting pressure on Windsor and Michonne. We're both seeing Windsor and Michonne struggle with the precision that we saw in innings one through three. Frather flying out to center back in the second, chokes up for this swing. On one the count. And the adjustments that both of these offenses are making are much earlier in the game than we've seen, knowing that both of these teams have the capacity to come back and win it in the final hour, but hoping to not have to result to resort to that, excuse me, today. Lacey Lord might be making a change here. Let's see. She's one of the all-time great D3 pitchers, and no, she's going to just a new towel for Windsor, who... In this Texas heat, that current towel may not be doing her much good. It's a 1-1 ball game in the top of the fourth. Second time through the order for trying a double, an RBI single, and a walk so far. With nobody outs, it's the bat of Amanda Prather. Windsor with a first pitch strike to the shortstop in the five hole. Emma Beyer on deck, barring a triple play, which would not be the first of the week. Popped up, Stockman has the catch, but nobody to throw to because of the shift. Maybe could have had the out at first. But because of that shift, there's just... So little chance to come through with a big defensive double play. And that's a big out there. 
made by Stockman for the Seagulls. Just some quick momentum and breaking the, mo the momentum that Trine has continued to build upon this inning. Again, probably had a chance there at first mm -hmm. if Maddie Lemon had gotten her attention, but she was so focused on the lead runner. But they're happy to have the first out now. Here's Emma Beyer. Still a chance for a big inning here for Trine with one out and two on. Joe Trine still standing on second after her RBI base hit brought home Lee. Trying now 44 and 5 on the year. Saw so try and play Barry and CNU earlier this year. Salisbury similarly had seen CNU. Each trying to challenge themselves with their scheduling. Left side, Lednam will get the out across the diamond. Now two away, but Joe Trine moves to third, Hill to second. And Tranter was one of the heroes of last game. She had a double that brought home a couple of the Thunder. Salisbury just needs one to get out of this still in a tied ball game. Thunder threatening to take their first lead with Joe Trine 60 feet away. Lincoln, that was the pitch that Debbie Hill was getting all day yesterday, that outside corner. Maybe a ball length off the plate. One and one. And there's the first time that we've seen that off speed from Lindsay Windsor. And again, she does not throw that if she doesn't need it. And this is what makes her so good. She will often wait to use that off-speed pitch. She's sparing with it until she sees that teams are starting to make an adjustment, that she introduces something new. Back to Windsor. There's out number three. Trine strands two in scoring position, but not before. Joe Trine. Both teams able to strike for a run with the promise of an even bigger inning. But it's settling right now for a tie ball game. Here's Kerry Jacoby coming up for a second time today, 0 for 1. Alexis Michon walked a couple last inning, did not surrender her first base hit of the ball game. Kerry Jacoby, Natalie Paoli, and Madison Lednam, the three, four, and five hitters, will try to change that. Bunt right back to the pitcher. Michon throws a strike over to first, one away. I appreciate the gamesmanship that the Salisbury offense is trying to do to shake things up against the Thunder defense. But knowing that Kerry Jacoby is an offensive specialist, I might have let her swing away there. Paoli 0 for 1. Poked one over to Emma Beyer, her last time up on the fly. That's a great placement for that pitch. Rise ball starting at the knees, ending at the waist. 
Great example of how effective a low rise ball can be even if it's not called for a strike. Yin Mishan, two wins this week. Each time coming in relief of all American pitchers. Strines other top arms, Keppel and Hill. Anna Sheets, Nicole Ortega, the other Salisbury arms we've seen. Along with Lindsey Windsor. The 3-1 to Paoli in the cleanup spot. Both of these teams had to come out of the elimination bracket and defeat an undefeated team twice to get here. Well, after she thought she may have walked on the last one, down on strikes here. Two up, two down for Alexis Michon. And, and trying. These are some great responses here from Alexis Michon. Had a bit of a rocky bottom of a third inning. Where she gave up a run can be easy to come out and you know and she was also having trouble throwing strikes that game had a couple walks excuse me that inning done a great great job here of bearing down even late in the count first strikeout for Alexis Michon here's Madison Lednam who was robbed of a base hit by center fielder Lee back in the second inning Salisbury still looking for that first hit This will hang up there, catch made, and a cheap out. Ainsley Phillips, it's a quick three up, three down response after Trine found its first run. Time to go back to the dugout, grab those bats. Four innings already complete here in game one of the championship series, a best two of three game series. There's one game today. Windsor in the circle against her fellow pitcher, Alexis Michon at the plate batting for the first game this week. Michon in the eight hole, grounded out to Paoli at short last inning, or pardon me, two innings ago. Ryan with three hits, stranded two in scoring position last inning after they tied it up. <laughs> Matty Lemon with a good read on that one, one away. And again, even though Alexis Michon, we haven't seen her having at bat this tournament. She's choosing some good pitches, taking her hacks, making the infield work for it. Hasn't been able to contribute yet, but if she gets a third at bat, I would be interested to see what she's able to do with it. Here's Ainsley Phillips. She had the first of now three hits today for Trine. It was a two out single in the third. See if she can get back on here. And if there's one thing the Thunder offense is great at, it is that two-out rally. They have done an incredible job all tournament long of making sure they work with whatever pitch they've got left. Wind blowing across the field from left to right. Not sure that'll be much help. Phillips out of Yorktown, Indiana, the sophomore. Lednam watches that one all the way into the glove and again fires a bullet 
Over to Myers, two away. And Madison led them getting a lot of work over there at third. She's been so solid. And I think, Lincoln, you mentioned she has started every single game of her entire collegiate career at third base. We well, like that she doesn't get ahead of herself, even when she doesn't have much time to work with. She mm -hmm. makes sure that she completes each step, secures that ball. First pitch, Woods, back to Windsor. And just like that, the top of the fifth is over. Number one seed, Salisbury. Lee in center, two away. <laughs> Michonne and Trine now one batter away potentially from getting back to the dugout and trying to find that first lead of the day. But first again, it's Jillian Dawson. Or actually, pardon me, it is Lauren Myers batting for the first time, obviously. Comes back in as the DP. Dawson continues in right field. And Dawson was put in in that first at bat situation to bunt. Was not able to get that down. Ended up being the second walk in a row that pushed a runner into scoring position that resulted in that first Salisbury run. First and only so far. 
Let that be a lesson. If you don't get that bunt down on your first try, yeah, no problem. <laughs> There's a staggering difference between getting it down on your first try and trying to execute after that. Uh, Dawson managed the walk. It was a good recovery at good at bad as a result. I think she saw basically three strikes and then followed by maybe four straight balls. Obviously fouling off the third strike. Here's Myers, though, in her first plate appearance today with two outs, nobody on. Sean evens it up two and two. And Myers, first team all conference, first team all region as well. Hitting in the mid 300s. Chance for trying to get out of the inning. After a strikeout and a flyout so far here in the bottom of the fifth. Uh, no favors from Myers on that one. about every coach told us coming into this week they want their team to be able to keep things loose and I think in that sense mission accomplished lofted out towards left over the glove of Prather this inning continues Lauren Myers with a two out base hit her or pardon me the second time the eight hole gets to run the bases and Myers just able to bloop this over Amanda Prather's head has enough power, even though she hits it on the knob of the bat, to push it over. So here's Maddie Lemon. The sacrifice bunt back in the third that helped produce a run before the inning was over. Maddie, your second baseman for the Seagulls. And her senior year. This one sent skyward. Chance to get out of the inning. Byer has it. Salisbury will strand another. Now two left on for the ball game. As we've played five complete. Getting closer to crunch time. Next up, top of the sixth inning in the Bats of Trine. Fifteenth game of the week. Trine and Salisbury have treated us to some entertaining softball, including some comebacks for both of them with their seasons on the line. Lindsay Windsor back in the circle. Just briefly was given that lead going into the fourth, but Trine immediately answered. This is, again, the freshman trio due up, Lee, Trine, and Hill. They produced the only run so far. Lee scoring it, and she's going to have her second base hit. Doubled back in the fourth, will single here. And let's see if this sets up for the Thunder to find that elusive lead. And what an outstanding contributor Emma Lee has been since the injury of Ellie Trine. Again, nobody here trying to overswing, trying to be a hero. She finds a good pitch, squares it up, hits it hard on the ground, pops it through the 5-6 hole. Joe trying at the plate. Outfield playing back. Puts down the bunt. Dies. It's a beauty. Chance to beat it out. She does, and there's nobody covering third. 
She sends Lee from first to third, runners on the corners with nobody out for Trine. And that's the type of chaos that Trine's offense has been able to create all year long, all tournament long. An extra leg there for Joe Trine, a stretch. And Emma Lee heads up, seeing that there's nobody at third, decides to take that extra 60 feet. That's your left fielder, Sam Flowers, who had the only opportunity to cover the bag. If you can execute, you can cause mayhem and probably get a free bag mixed in along the way. If Donnie Denkelson's going to run or try, and he will. As that's going to be Anna Gill running for Joe Trine. Go ahead, run on third. Potential insurance on first. Nobody out for Debbie Hill. Debbie Hill, when she comes to the plate, imagine she thinks pinch runners are a silly concept. Anybody can jog. <laughs> Just don't let me pass you after the home run trot. Big cut. They'll feign a throw down to second, hoping to get Lee off the bag. So Gill has already taken 60 feet, two in scoring position for Debbie Hill. And again, the outfield is playing back just a couple of steps in front of the warning track. Nobody out. The first two freshmen this inning have come through. Now time for the All-American. And Stockman critically keeping that ball in front of her. Leadoff single from Hill. She's on third. The bunt single from Trine. Her pinch runner Gill on second. They'll fly it out to left in the second, walked in the fourth. Two and one. And to pray they're on deck. What will be the difference in this ball game to very well matched teams? One of them will be crowned a first time national champion tomorrow. or otherwise very successful programs that we see here on a regular basis. The 2-2 from Windsor. Some great discipline we're seeing with two strikes on the board. Only first base unoccupied with nobody out as the count will stay full. All-American versus All-American, something has to give here. Windsor, the senior in the circle, facing the freshman. Left-handed hitter for the Thunder. Again, the 3-2. Mm. Great choice there by Debbie Hill. And that ball being fouled straight back would not be surprised if we see a ball starting high, ending high or an off speed here. We know that Lindsay Windsor wields that changeup well, pulls the string. Base is loaded. All three freshmen come through. And it's time for Amanda Prather, the senior. At first a chat as the flock gathers in the circle. Donnie Dankelson's going to run for Debbie Hill. Already with one pinch runner in scoring position. And April Sellers.
or trine. Twelfth game of the year for Sellers to make an appearance in. A big opportunity. Nate Parsley coming out to talk to Lindsey Windsor. Donnie Denkelson, as a result, talking to his runners, including two pinch runners and his batter, Prather, do up. And this is the type of offensive magic, surge of inspiration, call whatever you want, that we know Trine is capable of. We know both of these teams are capable of. We have no outs, bases loaded here. Parsley, both the pitching coach for Salisbury as well as their head swimming coach. You've never seen the seagulls swim. Very calm above the water, but the legs doing all the work below it. <laughs> Base is loaded for Trine. A chance to break this one open and take their first lead along the way in the sixth. First pitch to Prather. Middle of the infield, corners all in. Not willing to concede a run for a double play. One and one. Prather among the seniors trying to go out as a national champion. Should impact that right here. One and two. Lee got the inning started. Second straight time she's led off an inning with a base hit. She stands on third. The bunt single from Trine has Gill running for her on second. Hill with the walk as they run for her as well with Sellers. Neither pitcher today has relied on a, a strikeout pitch. Windsor struck out the first batter she saw today. That's the only strikeout so far. Would welcome one here. Full count, and Lindsey Windsor would not be the first All-American to walk home a run. Trying, looking for that elusive lead. Nobody out, base is loaded, top of the sixth, Prather. This should give Trine a run advantage. Throw home from Mace up the line. Nobody else able to advance, but Trine now with its first lead here in game one. Emma Lee comes home on the sack fly from Prather. And that was a great play out there by Abby Mace. She does whatever she can to get behind this ball so that she's moving forward through it and has the momentum for her throw. And as a result, that play is much closer because of that extra power she's got. A little bit too far up the line in order to be a competitive tag, but a great effort nonetheless. Now the last time Trine scored, they still stranded two. They have left three on as they've out hit Salisbury five to one in this ball game. And they put a crooked number on the board here. One on with runners on second and first for Emma Beyer, 0 for two today. Yeah, you knew Mace had the arm. We saw her airmail one over the catcher the last time. Uh, that last throw just up the line. Stockman did her best to try to apply a tag. No such luck. Two pinch runners on right now for Tron. Gill and Sellers with Emma Beyer at the plate.
Remember, Windsor retired the first eight batters she faced before trying and started to settle in. And the first strike, three and one. On deck, Ashley Tranter. Bulk of the production from Trine has come from the top of the order, specifically from the freshman. Count three and two. The three freshmen, four hits, two runs, and two walks. Officially four for seven. The rest of the team, just one hit. Fire trying to change that here. Payoff pitch back into the netting. It'll stay full. Again, the 3 2. Bases loaded. Second walk this inning. Lindsay Windsor and her teammates looking over to the Salisbury dugout for another towel. Pinch runner Gill on third, running for Joe Trine who had the bunt single. Sellers on second, running for Debbie Hill, who walked. Emma Byer on first after her walk to load the bases here in this sixth inning. Well, this is the moment where Salisbury is going to need to slow the game down, trying the offense, trying to speed the game up on the Seagull defense. They need to know where they're going, make sure they're communicating, know exactly where they're going to be making the throw if it comes to them, and then also need to be thinking two or three plays ahead. First pitch to Tranter off the mark. Salisbury not in position to turn a double play. Again, everybody in the infield up, as you see. Their priority, decisively a play at the plate. Trine has taken the lead here in the sixth. Emma Lee has scored both runs for the Thunder. Brayther had the sack fly this inning after Joe Trine brought Lee home the first time. With one out. Oh, goodness. A freebie to be had, but Emily Stockman never had a read on it. Well, stuck gazing up into the sun. And that ball immediately up. Oh, a big break for mm -hmm. the Thunder. Especially on Tranter, who has been so good in these situations with runners in scoring position. Tranter looking to get on for the first time in this game, 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. Count stays at 1 and 2. Salisbury has the top of its order coming up in the sixth. How much work will they need to do? Right now, trailing by one.
Base is loaded with one out for Trine, already with a lead, looking for insurance. The one-two to Tranter. That's a fair ball, force at the plate. And Stockman wisely will hang on to it. And that's the best case scenario for the Seagulls after that miscue there. Or just unfortunate happenstance for Stockman not being able to catch that foul ball. Tranter not able to deliver here. Donnie Dankelson will have someone bat for Alexis Michon. His starting pitcher, who we could very well see back in the circle with a lead for the first time. This will be Reese Rufacalba for the third time this week, the freshman. Has taken advantage of her opportunities. A 387 hitter coming into this week, the California native. Ruva Kalba has hit so well in this tournament that she is just six points away from a 400 batting average in her freshman campaign. And so many freshmen contributing to the Trine program this year. Seventh bat of this inning, but so far only one has scored for Tron. That's good enough to give them a lead, but they would feel a lot better with some insurance for whoever is in the circle next inning. And Ruva Kolba, when you're taking a look at where she's standing in the box, she is toes on the line. So anything over the middle of the plate may look more like an inside pitch, but that's going to be the one to hit. Lindsay Windsor just missed on that last one. If you're going to toe the line, strategy for if a ball is going to be pitched right at your knees, knowing that that's most likely going to be a strike. Right on cue. <laughs> An 0-2 hole now to Ruva Kolba. Toes on the line. A second strikeout for Windsor in this game would be huge, stranding three runners for Tron. She takes away that outside corner, but that means she needs to have, again, the strategy for the ball that's going to be pitched at her knees. Doesn't matter if at the last second you move off the line or if you step out. Either way, making sure you get your hands inside that ball and put it in between the lines. Whatever you need to do to produce here. Trine's been methodical, a couple of singles, a couple of walks with a sack fly sandwiched in between the free passes. And now just protecting the plate, the pinch hitter, Ruva Kalba. <laughs> Sellers, the pinch runner on third. Buyer on second, Tranter after the fielder's choice on first right now. As Ruva Kalba with a chance to break this game open. Lays off it, they'll appeal. One and two. And in this situation, again, wherever you hit it is going to be behind your runner at third. But there's a Big couple gaps out there. Abby May shaded over to the right side. Slow roller, fair ball. Play it first, and they say it hit her in the box. A foul ball. And that is the challenge. If you are going to be... Right off that left foot. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be crowding the plate like that, you have to make sure that you get to that inside pitch. If you're going to take it away. Make sure you truly take it away. Base is still loaded for the Thunder with two outs here. Ruva Kalba calls time. Trine has taken its first lead this inning with potential for more. That one gets away from Windsor. Eighty fourth pitch coming up from Lindsay Windsor. Two runs, three walks, a strikeout, five hits. The two two. Able to get out of the inning with her second strikeout of the day. This time, 
Rivacaba could not lay off it, but the Thunder, not a completely lost inning, take a lead. It's two to one when you rejoin us here on NCAA. Two teams still contending for the Division III Softball National Championship. It is our best of three game series beginning today with game one. Salisbury for the first time here in game one trailing. They took a one nothing lead in the bottom of the third. Trine immediately answered in the top of the fourth and has since tacked another one on in the sixth. As it's on to the bottom half of that inning, here's Abby Mace. A sack fly RBI that scored the go-ahead run back in the third for that short-lived advantage. Mace, Windsor, Jacoby. The three do up as Alexis Michon has re-entered after they batted for their starting pitcher in the top half of the inning. And if you're Salisbury, this is who you want. Again, for some late game, late inning inspiration. We know the Seagulls have that firepower, that ability to have the explosive offense. And we've seen Trine be able to chip away and have a big inning at any point during the game. So even though Trine has a lead, that is not a comfortable lead by any means for the Seagulls. Mace, Michonne wants it. Michonne gets it. Calling off Tranter at first. Gives way to Lindsay Windsor. She can single-handedly make up that deficit if she finds her 10th home run of the year, her second of the week. A ground out and a fly out to center so far today. The ground out was back to the pitcher, Michonne, in the first. Seventy-fifth pitch from Michonne. Just one hit today for Salisbury. It was last inning from Lauren Myers. Yeah, a little bloop over the head of Amanda Prather in that pocket between left field, shortstop, and third base. But it hits a hit. Inside pitch that Windsor will send over to the parking lot. Salisbury three times national runner up. And Windsor. Getting the barrel on a couple of these, but just out ahead. Now behind in the count to Michonne, though, one and two. It looks like Windsor is getting to those pitches by rotation. Really want to see her get her hands out in front, stay inside of that ball. We've seen her do, we've seen her hit that ball really well. And here in the sixth, it was the top third of the order to do up for Salisbury. Right now, top third of the order, 0 for 6. The sacrifice fly mixed in from Mace. Sean has kept a couple of All-Americans at bay for the most part. Blowing that wind right now, blowing straight in. Payoff pitch from Michon to Windsor. It's a walk. And let's see if Lacey Lord 
Makes any personnel changes. Windsor will run. Here's Kerry Jacoby, who is a part of that dramatic comeback two nights ago. And they trailed by four in the bottom of the seventh with two outs. Turned out they had Barry right where they wanted him. For an eighth inning walk-off. Where Jacoby squared around to bunt last inning unsuccessfully back to Michonne. And it was a good idea to keep the trying defense off balance. Not sure if that was a Jacoby idea or a Lacey Lord call. Dennis Smith will make his way back to the circle. As Carey goes over to talk to her head coach. They're about to be joined by Lindsay as well. Was that a safety squeeze? What was that? <laughs> Donnie Dankelson is going to heed some advice that he just received from his pitching coach, who he trusts as much as anybody. After Dennis Smith made the visit to Alexis Michon, her start is over. Tying run on first. She's already got two wins in relief. He very well could be the winning pitcher here today, but someone else will be coming on to close things out. There's a couple of good options, including one who's already in the lineup today. We'll step aside here on NCAA.com. They're going to make them sweat it out here in East Texas. A one-run affair with the tying run on first. So Debbie Hill, who's made an impact this week with her bat as well as that left arm, comes on. The wins this week. This time a save situation for Alexis Michon needing to record five outs. Jacoby at the plate. A 2-0 count. Nobody really cares about this, but if for some reason Jacoby walks... That will be charged to Ms. Sean. And she looks over to the swimming coach. All right, they will run for Windsor. This is McKenna Horner coming on. I believe the third time this week we've seen Horner come in to run. She represents the tying run. First pitch, pitching change. Second pitch. Change of runner. See what happens after this one. You can tell we are getting late in the game. Tying run on first with one out for Jacoby. Facing Hill now. And Hill was outstanding yesterday against Coe. And what to look for is this curve ball that she wields on both sides of the plate and then complements that really nicely with a screw ball and a rise. Able to work the ladder of that rise. Both of these teams have benefited from being the home team mm -hmm. with a chance to walk off victories in the eighth. At the moment, this one very much 
within striking distance for Salisbury. So Trine in the top of the seventh will have Phillips, Woods, and Lee do up. And it is ball four. So Michonne responsible for these two base runners. Again, that's just a stat thing. Big picture, Debbie Hill needs two outs to get out of this inning with a lead. Back-to-back -back walks, Windsor and Jacoby. Horner now down to second with Jacoby on first. Paley 0 for 2 with a line out in the infield and a strikeout. And Hill is going to work that outside corner. She's going to go there again and again. And will force opposing offenses to make an adjustment. Salisbury only one hit today has stranded two. A second hit here could tie the game. Right up the middle, Hill swats it down, still gets the lead out. Debbie Hill. Mm. Oh, under pressure. Swats it down, and as the lefty, able to throw a dart to third and plenty of time to spare. He has some great composure there from Hill. Knows exactly where she's going. Teammates are communicating to her. It's exactly what you need in this situation in order to cut the momentum for Salisbury. So Horner out at third. Jacoby moves to second. Paoli now the base runner first on the fielder's choice. Here's Madison Lednam. Her first time to see Hill. It would have been impressive just for Hill to get the out at first. <laughs> but as a left-hander, has that added advantage. With that said, the base runners had to freeze in case she caught a line drive. Mm -hmm. I think they were blinded in part, or had the blind spot, could not tell initially. Kobe on second, Paoli on first. Tying run, still in scoring position, but with two outs. Lednam opposite field, off the glove. Oh my goodness, couple of chances. Jacoby rounding third. That ball's not gonna get far enough away. A whole lot. Going on there, but in the end, it's bases loaded with two outs. Man, a lot of chaos. So many moments where that could have gone. That could have been an absolute disaster for the Thunder. They're able to get out of it. Worst case, no oh. out on the play. How about that for your second Oof. hit of the game for Salisbury? Off the glove of Tranter, almost could have been caught by Bayer. We're going to... Relive it there with the replay, but Beyer had dropped down. She then almost had a chance to throw it at first. Couldn't secure the ball. And Jacoby then, a little too generously rounding third, got back in time. They throw it away, but not far enough away. Well, this is why it's so important for opposing offenses to speed the game up. And you do that by putting the ball in play, not being an easy out. And then on the other hand, Trine did an incredible job of knowing where to go next. They were thinking two to three plays ahead. You also had some great backup here by Cassie Woods. If you don't have the backup there, Jacoby may have had the opportunity to take home. Here's Megan Reed, pinch hitting for Stockman, better than a 300 hitter on the year. Time for everybody to take a breath. This inning could go either way here in the bottom of the sixth. Tying run is on third right now with Jacoby with Paoli and Lednam behind her. But for Hill, with two outs, you just need to dial in on Reed, the pinch hitter. Infield can play back straight away. Just need one. Oh, 
approval rating of the strike zone, about 50-50. <laughs> and Flowers on deck. If she comes up this inning, the deficit is gone. With two outs, base is loaded for Salisbury. With two pitch, one and two now to read. And again, it's all about how you look at it, depending on what side of the ball you're on. If you are in the box, getting ready to hit, you only need one. You only need one good one. This inning began with the top of the order. Mace popped out back to the pitcher at the time is Sean. So sixth batter of the inning. Three of them are on the bases right now. Time called by Reed. And a great job by Reed taking control of her at bat, potentially interrupting the flow of Hill. Remember, Hill struck out 10 yesterday. Would welcome one here. Mm. And Reed right on that outside pitch. It's important for opposing defenses to know that when a player fouls that ball back immediately or straight back to the fence, that she's right on it with her timing. It was a narrow miss. An adjustment needs to be made for her pitcher. Big pinch hit opportunity here for Reed with bases loaded, but two outs. They'll do it again. The count one and two. Reed doing a great job of choosing the go-to pitch of Hill. We saw Coe struggle with that yesterday. They did not want it. They wanted something inside, and they continued to get rung up by Hill. Instead of figuring out to, a way to barrel up or put in play, the best pitch she's been throwing all day. And your tying run for Salisbury, who at one point led 1-0, now trails 2-1, is Carrie Jacoby on third. She walked. Paoli, the fielder's choice, now runs at second, letting them the single on first. Baby Hill's ready for Reed to step in into the batter's box. With a 2-2 count pending and two outs. Right side gets through. Will they send the second runner? No. Every buck six. It's a 2-2 ball game. And goal still threatening for more. As Sam Flowers comes up. Megan Reed with a pinch hit. And that's exactly what you're asking for from your pinch hitter there. Does a great job of chipping away at Hill. Finds a way to put the ball in play. Just a quick bloop in that pocket between right, first, and second. And it's just enough to bring home that runner at third. So no win for Michon in her first start of the week. She's still responsible for the runner. Or rather, was responsible for the runner, Jacoby, who just came home after she threw the first pitch. Here's Flowers. Chance to give Salisbury its second lead of the day. Boy, both teams are going to be set up well in the seventh, mm -hmm. lineup-wise. <laughs> They're also both set up well in the circle with a couple of All-Americans. Haley on third, Lednam on second, Reed on first. Base is still loaded with two outs. Phillips gets her pitcher the strike. One and one. Yeah, and Flowers needs to know here that she could be looking for a number of pitches Hill could be throwing, but if she's going to choose that curveball in the inside corner, it's probably going to look like it's coming right at her. She's got to trust and hit it gap to gap. That's that pitch right there. <laughs> if Trine surrenders a run here, all of a sudden they are down to their final three outs. Phillips, Woods, and Lee do up in the top of the seventh. Salisbury has found two of their first three hits this inning. Station to station softball here in the sixth to tie it up. Flowers back to Hill, just need one. As these teams have taken turns, stranding bases loaded, it's just a 2-2 ball game. We go on to the seventh. Pressure will be on the Thunder to reclaim a lead. Salisbury will.
Back in Marshall, Texas, the team that comes up short today, whenever that may be, will be asking what if, as Trine has left six runners on, Salisbury, Strand's base is loaded there in the sixth. They've left five now for the ball game. We've got a couple of All-American pitchers now in this ball game. Lindsay Windsor continues her start. As each team has come back from a one-run deficit, Ainsley Phillips trying to get things started here in the seventh. Trying, no matter what they do here in the seventh, won't feel comfortable knowing that Salisbury, the home team in this first game, that will flip tomorrow in game two. Now on a pitcher like Windsor, you're going to want to go into every at-bat knowing what pitch you're looking for. Some coaches give a game plan. Some coaches give their player the right to choose whatever it is that they hit best. Lednam. To Myers, followed by the fist pump, one away. They're one out closer to bringing the bat of Myers, Lemon, and Mace to the plate. Here's Cassie Woods, who by all accounts is due. 0 for 3 today, a strikeout and a couple of ground outs. And tough to get Cassie Woods out that many times in a row. So, you know, she's due and she's hungry. This is where she needs to channel the fact that she's a freshman at Trine. It's her first year. <laughs> All the other freshmen have done so well today. She got her degree three years ago. One out, nobody on with Woods at the plate. And she'll have a chance to run the bases now as a potential winning run in the top of the seventh. That's the most productive out Cassie Woods has had. He's not been able to produce today. That might be her last at bat today, so found a way to get on base. All right, Emma Lee has scored both runs today for Tron. She would like to share the wealth here with a teammate Woods. <laughs> Lee with a double and run scored leading off the fourth, a single and run scored leading off the sixth. Donnie Dankelson's going to run for Woods. So that's Emily Wheaton once again this week. As he sticks to the same page of the phone book, replacing Woods. And Wheaton was one of the base runners that came around to score yesterday. So a 1 0 count pending on Lee with Trine on deck. She's two for three with an RBI. And Debbie Hill in the hole, your current pitcher for Trine. And if you're looking at the numbers for Lee, this falls in Windsor's favor. I mean, she's already had a couple hits on the day. She's hitting 308 on the season. So for all intents and purposes, you think if the numbers don't lie, this isn't out here. Emily looking to defy the odds. Luckily for you, Emily, <laughs> freshmen haven't learned the law of averages yet. <laughs> Two on with one out, Wheaton and Lee. And what a time to be playing some of your best ball, especially in your freshman campaign. Emma Lee, outstanding coming in for Ellie Trine, the senior. Makes way for Joe Trine in the three hole, an RBI single in the fourth, a bunt single in the sixth. And let's see if that will move Lindsay Windsor out of the circle and she'll give way to Savannah Sheets. So both teams 
have made a change in the circle today. We'll see if Sheets can shut down Tron and give Salisbury a chance to walk it off in the seventh. Lindsey Windsor will remain in the ball game out in right field. So that'll end the day for Jillian Dawson, who we saw bat once and patrol the outfield. Savannah Sheets, we've seen her as a starter and a reliever this week. Again, both these teams with all sorts of flexibility with their pitchers. With three good arms to choose from. More than that, but three exceptional arms to choose from. Here's Joe Tron. Two for three today with an RBI. Two teammates on right now. After Ainsley Phillips was retired, Salisbury is still looking for that second out after a hit batter and a single. And Wheaton, your runner on second, Lee on first. And as much as we talk about last year, Trine finishing his national runner-up, Joe Trine, simply a spectator, having just graduated high school. I assume back when she was at Kokomo High School, her name was Joe Kokomo. The 1-0. Be selective here. Only third base unoccupied with one out. In the top of the seventh. They've had chances for a big inning. But neither team has plated more than one in any given frame. Pull this one. Well played by Donnie Dankelson, who was ready to get the lead out. Well, underhand scoop to Lednam. And Sheets now your pitcher facing Trine. With Wheaton and Lee, your base runners, third base unoccupied with one out. Fighting off the 2-2. That's exactly where Joe Trine's hands need to be in order to hit that pitch well. Just a little bit underneath it. But we've seen both teams struggle with that inside pitch today. Instead of getting their hands to it out in front, starting to see them foul it off rotationally. Sheets delivers. Two runs on six hits for Trine. Two runs on three hits for Salisbury. Trine also aided by one error from the Seagulls as Salisbury came into this week seated number one, Trine number three. Again the 2-2. Two -two. Towards left, Flowers has a read on it, comes in and makes the catch. Probably would have had the force had she not been able to get underneath it. As the runners understandably had to freeze for this one. Flowers takes a couple steps back, realizes that, that ball is in front of her, makes a good adjustment, and leaves her feet just to be sure she has that ball in her glove. All of a sudden, Sheets and the Seagulls defense just need one more, but it's a big one. Here's Debbie Hill. 
She could put a crooked number on that board all of a sudden with one mistake. Only hit her with two home runs this week, and they have been convincing. Today, a fly out, a walk, and another walk. She's also come on in relief for Michonne. As both starting pitchers have since given way to Hill and Sheets. Fifth batter of this inning with two on and two out. And Sheets does not appear interested in being on the wrong end of a highlight reel. Prather is on deck. Sack fly RBI last inning briefly gave Trine a lead before Salisbury matched it. Will Hill see a pitch she can offer her bat at? That's going to keep her at least at the plate. Again, Myers, Lemon, and Mace do up for Salisbury in the bottom of the seventh. Unintentional, intentional. Bases are loaded. And a force anywhere to get out of this inning. Either that or Amanda Prather can give Trine its second lead here late. And if I'm Prather, I'm going to stack the deck in my favor if I play well with a chip on my shoulder. An unintentional, intentional walk to Hill means that they're trying to get to me. They think that I might be the better option for an out. Third walk today of Hill. Second free pass this inning. Woods, who is hit by pitch, her pinch runner. Wheaton's on third. Lee on second. They're on first is Hill. And Prather last year, all-tournament team at the championship. And almost an oops. It looks like Prather just thought she wanted that one. Decided to hold up at the last second. Sheets just needs one more strike. Talked about how important it is for hitters to take definitive swings. It's yes until no. Second straight inning with bases loaded. This time around, Thunder don't plate one. And it means Salisbury, their next run. And a Could great, be a walk off. Great off speed there from Savannah Sheets. Bottom half of the seventh coming up next here on NCAA.com. Well, Trine left their seventh, eighth, and ninth base runners on base in this ball game. If Salisbury scores this inning, there will be no chance to respond for Trine until game two tomorrow. It's Lauren Myers, Maddie Lemon, the bottom of the order, followed by Abby Mace in the top spot. This eighth spot in the lineup has produced a walk and a single, the latter coming from Myers. One for one today. Debbie Hill back in the circle for her first full inning in relief. Uh, officially a blown save. It'll all be forgiven if she picks up yet another win. Terry Jacoby scoring the tying run last inning. Would love to have a chance to come up again for another dramatic seventh for a second straight game for Salisbury. If this goes to extras, both teams have played extra innings once. They were each the home team. They each walked it off in the eighth. Both of those in elimination games. The 
The 2-0 to the DP Myers. 2-1. And, and in order for Lindsay Windsor with 55 RBIs on the season, Abby Mace leading things off with 40. That means the bottom of the lineup has to get on base, has to find a way to be on base for that run production to be possible. Lauren Myers here has an opportunity to create some chaos here for the Thunder. And we know that Maddie Lemon has that home run power. She's like a second leadoff. So this is the best case scenario here for Salisbury as far as I'm concerned. We're looking for that, again, late offensive magic to come through here. Only way it could be better is if there wasn't that All-American in the circle <laughs> standing in your way. The 3-1 to Myers. And 2-0 and oh and 3-1, and one, both hitters counts. So if there's ever a time to bear down and put even more laser focus on the pitch you're looking for, that would be it. Those are going to be the ones where the pitcher is going to have to move that a little bit too close to the white. Big gap between left fielder and center fielder here. As I think it's going to be hard for Myers to pull one against the lefty hill. Three balls, two strikes. And as we get the bottoms of the seventh started in a 2 2 affair. Got her. Trying one out closer to batting again in the eighth. And that is a great pitch there from Debbie Hill. Screwball moving, starting in the river, moving out into the other batter's box, well out of reach. Great spot there for two strikes on the board. Maddie Lemon's sack bunt in the third was critical to giving them their first lead of the day. It's 0 for 1 with a pop out more recently in the fifth. Salisbury has stranded five today, including bases loaded last inning. And we know that both teams have struggled with that inside pitch. And on an inside pitch, you're going to need to hit it out in front. Make sure you keep your hands inside the ball. Conversely, with an outside pitch, you're going to need to let that ball travel. If you're working on a tee, you'd have to aim to hit it in the middle of your body. So it takes a little bit more patience here for Salisbury to capitalize on that pitch that Hill's giving them. Lemon punches this one out towards right. That one's trouble. It could be a triple for Maddie Lemon. And the walk-off run is 60 feet away with two outs to work with. Oh, Trine trying to track that one down on the fly. Could not get to it. And once it was off the fingertips of her glove, Lemon would not be stopped until she was standing on third. And there was definitely an opportunity for Joe trying to take a peek at the wall to have an idea of where she was at. Tough play, no matter what. We know that that fence out there is brand new. So it's going to hit hard off the wall, create a bit of chaos. So Lemon on third. And when life gives you Maddie Lemon, <laughs> you give her a little lemonade. <laughs> She'll hydrate to make sure she can run 60 feet after trucking around the bases. And now for Salisbury with two outs to work with, if only you had two All-Americans to try to bring her home for the win. <laughs> and like I shared, Maddie Lemon, she's gonna have that power to bring runners home if the bottom of the lineup produces, gets on base. And she's gonna ha be that second leadoff and when she gets on base, she supports Mason Windsor. And they got two outs to work with here. First pitch to Mays from Hill. Any kind of blue pit, that's your ball game. Infield committed in. Obviously, they must get the out at home. Outfield 
Standard depth. It would likely test the arm of any outfielder. And again, this is where one swing can end this for Salisbury. And it doesn't necessarily have to be one that sends one over the fence. Put it through the infield. Put it on the ground, make them make a play. Neither of these teams have lost since day one. That's gonna be a foul ball. Yeah, even a sack fly out here, which we've seen teams do a great job of working with. That's how the two runs scored early for Salisbury and Trine. The strikeout of Myers, but then the triple to Lemon. A one-two count for Mace with Windsor on deck, if necessary. All four of Salisbury's hits have come over these last three innings. Each team has taken turns with a one-run lead. If Salisbury can establish another one-run lead, that's your ball game. Hill in the circle, the All-American. Mace at the plate, also recognized among the best in the country. And they will again stare each other down with a 2-2 count. And truly here, Lincoln, it's going to be about who executes the best. Hill needs to not press, trust her pitches. Abby Mace also needs to trust herself that she's got the discipline and the bat to barrel one up. And even if she's not able to get it done, she's got her teammate, another senior, another All-American behind her to support. Again, the 2-2. Two -two. This should do it. Back to the wall. They'll walk it off. A home run from Abby Mace. And Salisbury takes game one of the championship series. And what a way to walk it off. Abby Mace doesn't need, just needs one good swing on a ball, put it in play to get that extra 60 feet for Maddie Lemon. But instead she says, nope, I think I'll send one over the fence only back in the park because it ricochets off of the scoreboard. All week long, picking up another loss this week meant your season was over. Not the case. Trine and Salisbury will turn around and do it again tomorrow, 11 o'clock Central. As Trine will be in that home dugout, they perhaps will be in a chance to walk off a ball game. It's the second walk-off win this week for the Seagulls as Abby Mace just needed a blue pit. <laughs> Instead, conquers the outfield wall to regain the team lead in home runs. Her 10th on the year, the biggest perhaps of her career. The two-run shot to score Maddie Lemon and Mace herself. It's a 4-2 to final. Salisbury is one win away from being crowned for the first time in program history national champion. We will talk to you again tomorrow, 11 o'clock Central, for game two. If Tron can win that one, we will play the full extent of the 2023 season and turn right back around and play game three. For Sydney Gearbrack and our entire NCAA.com crew, I'm Lincoln Rose. We will talk to you tomorrow with the highly anticipated clash again between the Thunder and the Seagulls.